Nothing breaks a CGI image faster than repeating elements in areas where you'd expect variation. If you're using a particle system to plant trees and grass or scatter rocks, it will not look real if every object has the exact same material. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a really handy little node setup which adds totally random variation to any texture-based material in Blender. Then, I'll show you another method to boost this effect to the next level. Okay, so I have a really simple little setup here. It's just this floorboard, basically, and I've duplicated it a bunch of times. And you can see the material over here is just a principal shader and has a couple of image maps going into it, right? And you can see the problem. Every single one of them looks exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is with Node Wrangler enabled, if I press Ctrl and T, I can add mapping information to this, right? And I can control the location, but if I do that, it applies it to every single one, which is no good. So what we can do here, if we, I'll just move those over a little bit further. If we um, add in this separate XYZ node, what that does is it takes the mapping information, which is a vector, you can see it's a vector output, and it turns it into uh, math data. And then we can use a combined XYZ node. And if we plug in the X and the Y, you don't need the Z. If we plug in the X and the Y, it turns the vector into math, and then it turns the math back into a vector. So what's the point there, right? Well, what we can do is in between these two points, while the data is math, is we can fiddle with it. We can add in a math node, right? And I'm gonna duplicate that math node and apply it to both. And you can see now what we can do is we can add to the number another number, but that'll still apply it the same to every one. So what we need to do is we need to use another node and that's the object info node. You'll have probably seen this node before if you've seen some of my other videos. And I'm gonna get this output at the bottom. If we just take a look at these, there's an output called random, and it gives a slightly different number value to each one. And we can apply, use this random and add it to uh, the information over here. And what that's done is it's gave each one of these boards a slightly different mapping information based on a random number. So what I'll do to make this more obvious is I'm just gonna rotate this on the Z axis. So each one of the grains is now going the right direction. And you can now see that each one of these is actually slightly different. There's no two floorboards that are exactly the same. The ones next to each other are completely different as well. So that's a good way to add just a little bit of variation. If you have like um, rocks scattered or something like that, you can add a bit of variation. But I said I was gonna show you how to take this to the next level. And the way we do that is with colors. Right, so I'm just gonna hook up these other maps. because They need the same information, okay? So I'm gonna apply this to the normal map and things like that as well. And to do the colors, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the image, uh, map and I'm going to add in a mix RGB shader right I'm going to set the mode to overlay and at the moment that's just going to overlay each one of them with a little bit of white which isn't going to do much of anything but what we can do is if we add in a color ramp okay and we get the random output from over here from the object info and plug that into the factor then what that's gonna do is it's gonna take, for each object, it's gonna take a random point on this map. And we can get the, the color output and we can plug that into color two. And now each one of these floorboards has had a slightly different color applied to them. Then what we can do is get the random again and apply that to the factor. And that'll give us an even wider range on this. Now, we can actually play around with this. For instance, let's say we wanted most of the floorboards to be like a lighter shade. All we would have to do is just bump up this lighter one. And now you can see we've only got one or two dark values in here. Same as if we wanted most of them dark. We could just bump that up. You can um, you can add different colors in. 
if you were making a particle system or something where everything had to be crazy colors, you could add in like oranges and like blue colors and stuff like that. You can change the type to constant, which will give you quite cool control. You can also change the blending mode to say mix. And you can have a huge amount of variation here really, really easily, guys. I use this effect all the time when I'm making um, like rock systems and plants and things like that. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you're not subscribed to this channel already. And let me know what you think of the new intro in the comments below, please, guys. I would love to hear what you think about that.